Convection is, is associated to movement. It's exactly associated to transport of mass due to movement. Okay? So then convection is mass transport, and whenever you can imagine particles, that's an image that I will repeat many times. You imagine that this is a, I'm a particle and I have a back with me. And in that back I have properties. Okay? I have properties, which can be you no know, density, velocity, stresses, strains. <coughs> and what about if I am moving? These properties move with me. Okay? So this the property changes a long time, at least partially, due to the motion of particles. If I consider the port the, pr the property uh, mass, for instance, so mass there is no mass at that point. Imagine that there is no particle here at this time. But when I reach that point, there is my mass. So properties change due to motion of particles. Okay? So that is what we call convection. Convection is the change of properties due to mass movement. There is other way in which properties can move along the space, across the space. This is non-convection. But convection is just the, 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 mo the, the change of properties at the space points due to the fact that the particles are moving through space and then the, particle, the properties carried by, by, by particles uh, make, occupying different points of space, make vary this property in a space. So associated to convection, there is the convective flux. Look, imagine you have a surface, a fixed surface. We give it a normal to this surface. So this surface is fixed in a space. So the continuum medium moves a long time. And the particles of the continuum medium move a long time. There are, so there will be particles crossing this first surface a long time. So far, do you agree with me? So particles will cross this fixed surface a long time. And then in this movement and this crossing of particles of this surface, <coughs> the property carried, the properties carried by particles will cross also this surface period of time. <coughs> so we can talk about something which is, imagine you have a property, property that we know by calligraphic A, and this property can be any, for instance, the density, the velocity, the stress, whatever. Okay, <coughs> and this property, the, the, this property which is carried out by particles, or um, carried by particles, crosses the surface as particles do. So we can talk about the amount of that property, stress, density, mass, that cross this surface due, due to the motion of particles per unit of time. <coughs> per unit of time. This is what we call convective flux. Let's now talk a little more about convection. As we said, convective flux is then the amount of a certain property A that crosses a fixed surface uh, in the space, S, per unit of time. Don't forget that, per unit of time. Okay? So that is something that depends on the surface. Okay? See, if I change the surface, the flux will be different. Okay? So let's try to compute that, that concept, which is convective flux, in terms of some entities that are, could be available for us. So let's consider a property, whatever it is, property that, that you know, this abstract property A. And let's <coughs> characterize a number uh, a, a field, which could be a scalar, vector, etc., which it said, what is the a specific contents of the, profit, the property A, of the property A, in a point of the space X and a time T? Look, a specific content. <coughs> I told you already this, that the word specific refers to amount of something per unit of mass. And the word density refers to the amount of something per unit of, of density is per unit of 
volume. Specific is per unit of mass. So we can talk about the specific weight as the weight per unit of mass and density as the mass per unit of volume. Okay? So the word says also. So this property is something, let's assume that we know that. The now amount of this property existing at every point of the space, that's supposed to be written in, in, in a special description, the amount of the property A per unit of mass, the specific contents. Okay? So now let's consider a surface. And let's give a normal. So if the surface is open, we have to say what is the sense of the normal, because the normal could go uh, this sense or the other sense. So let's choose a sense and talk about the flux, try to compute the flux of this property, convective flux, across this surface in the direction of the normal, in the sense of the normal m. So let's start by considering a differential of surface. So that's a differential of surface at a certain point of here. The normal n is that. And at this time, at the time we are considering, we're considering an interval of time. So from time t to time immediately after t plus delta t. So it's a time interval whose length is delta t, differential of t. Okay? So at time t, we have here a particle which has a certain velocity. Let's imagine is that. So where is this particle at time t plus delta t? The particle that was just at this differential of s at time t, where is this particle at time t plus delta t? Well, if the velocity is at, <coughs> the space which has been uh, uh, done by this particle at, at the interval time dt would be the velocity times the, the time. So that particle would have moved to that position and the space that, that has been uh, done by this particle, what has been uh, moved by this particle, is V differential of t. So this is where the particle is. Okay? So in other words, all particles that was, were in this differential of S are now in this differential of S here. So what about all particles that have crossed this differential of S in this time interval? If the first particle, the one that was here at t, at the end of the interval is here, all the other particles would be at the interior of this volume. So we can say that all particles that have crossed this differential of S at the interval t plus delta t are now in this volume. Okay? Okay. By the way, this volume has, is a cylinder, as you see, with a base which is differential of S, and the height of this cylinder is just the projection of this vertical on n. So it's a dot product of differential of x times n, so it's b n delta t. So finally, we can say that the volume occupied by all particles that have crossed differential of S at this time interval is the basis, the base differential of S times the height, so it's b n delta t ds. Okay? So what is the mass of these particles? The mass of these particles would be the density of these particles, rho, times the differential of volume. So the mass of all particles that have crossed the differential of S at this time interval is rho differential of B, so it's this differential of, of, of times rho, so rho B N differential of S differential of T. Okay? So now if phi, if phi says what is the amount of the property that we are dealing with per unit of time, the amount of this property existing here is the mass, dm, times phi. If I multiply the amount of, of property per unit of mass times the mass, I will tell the amount of, of property. But this amount of property, so phi differential of m, is then the amount of the property A that have crossed that differential of S at this time interval. Okay? So that is the amount of the property, the property I'm referring to, characterized by its a specific value, a specific content, and it can be characterized by phi differential of M. But this has been cro has crossed differential of S in a time 
what comes from t to t plus delta t. So per unit of time, I have to divide differential of t. So phi dm dt divided by dt, which, by the way, is phi times that divided by differential of t that cancel, rho phi bn differential of s, is the differential of convective flux, is the amount of the poor particle that, have crossed, that has crossed this differential of s per unit of time due to convective transport. Very long, very long to say, but it's that. So depends on what, on the density, on the velocity, on the normal, on the amount of the surface, and on phi, the specific content of this property. So if I know how much is the convective flux to the differential of S, if I want to compute the convective flux to the, sum, on the whole surface, I just have to sum. So I have to compute the integral <coughs> of all S of that rho phi B N differential of S. So this provides the expression of the convective flux, a mathematical expression of the concept that we have defined as convective flux, the amount of a certain property that has crossed a differential surface per unit of time, a, a, a fixed surface in the space per unit of time. Okay? Okay, so that can be characterized, as we see, as a surface integra or in integral of the density times phi times b, uh, times b dot n. Look that this is a vector, v dot n, is a, 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 dot vec a dot product of two vectors, so this is a scalar, p dot n is in fact the normal component of the velocity to the surface, okay? By the way, what happens is the surface, instead of being an open surface, as that one, is a closed surface. Well, it can be defined also. <coughs> if we define now, as we usually do, the normal as the outward normal, in case of a closed surface, the normal, the sense of the normals, always is defined outwards, so from the interior to the exterior. So now we can again compute the force as the, the, the convective flux as the integral of the rho phi bn differential of s on all the boundary delta b of this. Well, looking a little deeper physically in that problem, we see that, of course, if you imagine that the velocity field is like that, and the normal is like that here, the normal is like this here. So b times n, for instance, in this region, where b is closer to the sense of n, b times n, the dot product this term here, will be what? Positive or negative? In that region here. How will be b times n here? And the, here? Negative. negative. So in this integral, which could be considered the sum, no? sum of summons, can be uh, positive in some points and negative with some others. So we can consider that there is a zone where b times n is positive, where this integral will provide something which is positive, which is turned from the outflow. Okay? And there will be another zone where this integral or this term are, is negative and the sum of these will be uh, of the points for where it is negative, the inflow. So finally, the integral, the convective flux of a property through a closed surface can be positive or negative, depending if the outflow is larger or smaller than the inflow. So depending on if the, the regions where the flow is outwards, particles move from inside to outside, dominate on the regions where the flow is negative. So particles just move from outside to inside. Follow me? Okay? So that would, would be a positive or negative. If it's positive, that means that the global flow, the overall flow, finally, after doing all the integral, then there is more, more property that goes out than that that comes in. But if it's negative, that, that would mean that there is more amount, there is a larger amount of property that comes in than the part that is going out. Okay? So this is the net convective flux. So the convective flux concept can be applied to both open surface and closed surfaces. 
the only point is that when you talk about cloud surfaces, then the normal is always outwards. Okay? So, look, by the way, the convective flux concept can be also extended to a moving surface. If the surface is moving, we can also talk about the same. The, the surface is moving, but if it's moving, moving, so to speak, differently from the, from, the, from the particles' movement, will be crossed by particles. But what happens if the, if the surface is a material one? What happens about the convective flux? It's known. So, a part of, by definition, a material surface is that which is made all along time by the same particles. So particles don't cross the, part, the, the surface. So if convective flux, which refers to that part of the properties that crosses the surface due to movement of particles, is zero. Of course, the surface can be crossed the, the, by property due to other types of transport but not for convective, for, for convective transport. So for convective transport, the convective flux of any material, uh, through any material surface is known. But look, as I said just a moment ago, we can talk about non-convective flux. So imagine that I am the particle, and I jump scarring properties. And of course, due to my movement, properties in my back are moving along a space. That is what we call Convective transport, okay? But now imagine that I am just uh, at rest. Could I send my properties to another particle? Well, I can throw them. I can just throw some particles to, to you, and you increase your amount of property because, and I decrease my amount of particle. So properties can move in ways which are different from move through space in different in ways that are different from convection. This is called non-convection. And the name that this not convective transport are, is given depends on the context. For instance, in some physics, they call that advection. Uh, also, sometimes, uh, diffusion. What is diffusion? I just have a fluid at rest. I place some thing in one, some salt in one point, and the, the amount of salt, without no motion of the flow, just spreads over the all domain of, of because salt diffuses. Okay? So the amount of salt or property of every particle changes a, lo a long time, so uh, and in every point of the space, changes a long time because there is a way of transporting the amount of salt, the property salt, in different from convection, because particles are not moving, because the fluid is at rest, okay? And then, for instance, conduction. Conduction is something, the word, that it is used for transport of, of, of properties, non-convective uh, transport of particles in, therm in, in, in thermal problems. For instance, you know, you have heard that if I just take a metal, <coughs> imagine that this is a metal bar, so I just keep address this bar, and I just put a lighter on one side here. So I increase the temperature in that side. I provide temperature to the particles of that side. What would happen at the other side after a while? It will become hotter. Okay? So that means that the heat, the property heat, has moved from this side to that side by some phenomenon which is not convection, because particles haven't moved. So what is the phenomenon called? It's conduction. Conduction of heat, heat conduction. So there is a non-conduction, heat conduction is a non-convective flux of poor properties, or transport of particles, not associated to the movement of particles. Of course, of course, that heat can be also transported by convection. For instance, if this is a heated bar, and I move along a space with that, then the heat moves with the, the, the transport of the particles, move along a space, and there is a convective transport of heat. But heat also, as many properties, can be transported by convection or by ways, procedures other than convection which are here, we'll, we'll just group them under the word non-convection, non non-convective, 
and will take different names depending on the subject. Okay, so by the way, talking about that, in the same way that we have been able to characterize the convective flux, so the flux due to transport of particles, as an integral of something, rho phi b, which is a normal, times n differential of s, and this could be characterized as a vector, the convective flux vector or tensor, so we just will define for, not for characterizing the non-convective flux something which will be a function of a space and time, which will, will be the, the non-convective flux vector. So that the non-convective flux, the definition of non-convective flux will be then the amount of a property that crosses per unit of time a surface in the space not due to the convection for reasons other than convection and will be characterized by this, which we call the non-convective flux. How is the vector of, how do, do, does we, do we characterize this non-convective flux? Well, we need additional theories. For instance, in thermal problems, in thermal problems, these non-convective flux for conduction, of, of heat conduction, that was characterized by a famous physical law that maybe you can remember, which is the Fourier's law. Fourier's which was, by the way, a civil engineer too. The, the, the same time working at the uh, Cold Polytechnique, was, he was uh, accompanying uh, Napoleon in the uh, uh, Egyptian campaign. So he went to the Egyptian country where Napoleon did a, a military comp a campaign there. He accompanied him as, a, in, in, as a, a player of scientists that were in charge of, I mean, trying to, to, to document or trying to report on the cultural heritage of the uh, Egyptian culture. So there were many scientists, and Napoleon was, uh, and, and Fourier was one of them. He was then in contact with high temperatures, and he became obsessed by heat. Obsessed. And due to this obsession, he also developed some trouble, so to speak. He became a little paranoid with that. And also, but he de developed some physical laws for characterizing the transport of heat, the heat convection. And this is what we call, it's called the Fourier's law. We'll just visit it, okay? So a little history about, about uh, uh, convection, non-convective flux. But in other ways, in other diffusion, for instance. For diffusion, it's characterized, this vector, by the so-called fixed law, okay? Fixed law, F-I-C-K. Fick is the scientist that developed that. So there are several ways to define the non-convective flux through the definition, a specific definition of a convective flux vector. But for convective flux, the definition only requires the definition of this phi, the amount, the specific contents of the property, the amount of the property per unit of mass. 